Okay, so as I said, we're talking about the auto cycle. We've just introduced the auto cycle here. This is an ideal cycle that mimics a spark ignition engine. Now, the first phase is the first step in the cycle to go from state one to state two is an isentropic compression. So we're going to decrease the volume. We're going to compress it. That means we're putting work into it at this point. Uh, we're going to do so isentropically. So um, we talked about isentropic in Chapter 7. Now, there are two things that if we know about a, a process that we will allow us to assume it's isentropic. If you don't know what those are, pause it. There, there should be a gag reflex right now. Oh, Steve, that is, here's the two things that mean it's isentropic. Pause and go figure that out. If you don't know what are the two things I need to know to assume it's isentropic. Pause now. Okay, you got them? Are you back? All right, so there's two things we need to know. I'm not going to tell you. There's two things we need to know in order to um, assume this is an isentropic process. Uh, I've drawn insulation around it. That should tell you one of them. Um, and the other one is, is kind of already been given, but again, I'm not going to give that to you. I'm expecting you to have already learned that. Um, the second, uh, second process from state two to three is where we hold the volume of the cylinder constant and we add heat to the cylinder. Okay, so we're going to add heat, and again, this mimics the combustion process where you've got a, a fuel mixture that's burning and that generates heat which causes pressure and temperature increase. This replaces that. We're not worried about the chemistry associated with the combustion process. We're just going to say we're just going to add heat and we're going to, um, the, the auto cycle is, is saying let's, let's hold the volume constant and pour in a bunch of heat. That's going to increase the pressure and temperature within the cylinder because again we've got air behaving as an ideal gas. And then we're going to operate or from state three to four that process is going to be an isentropic expansion. This is where the work comes out. This is where we actually extract work from the system. Now again, I've drawn insulation around this uh, because it's isent well, we're assuming it's isentropic and that means there's two things we're assuming for it to be isentropic. Uh, so it's going to expand from state three to four. As it does that, it's going basically to kind of a lower energy state and so uh, the temperature is going to drop, the pressure is going to drop. Okay, It's going to expand isentropically. And then uh, the last step is you've got to reject the remaining heat. So again, I put a whole bunch of heat in here. There's a lot of energy. I put a little bit of work in to cause the compression. Now I've gotten a whole lot of work out. And, but I can't get all of this work in plus heat in. I can't get all of that to turn into work out. I've got to reject the remaining heat or the remaining energy that didn't come out here through the work out. I've got to reject it. And we'll do so at a constant volume, the larger volume. So uh, we'll expose, here we'll expose to a high temperature source, and here we'll expose to a low temperature source to allow it to absorb and reject heat uh, to complete the cycle. Okay, so that's the auto cycle, ideal, idealized cycle to, um, to mimic a spark ignition engine. What does this look like graphically? Well, if we graph this on a PV diagram, it looks something like this, where I've got uh, from state one to two, again, we're going to compress, so I'm going to decrease the volume. We're going to do so isentropically. It means constant entropy, so the entropy is going to be the same from state one to two. So I'm going to compress it isentropically. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to add some heat in this constant volume. So vertical line here uh, along, uh, you know, again, volumes down here on the x-axis, so a vertical line here from 2 to 3. And then we're going to do an isentropic expansion to go from 3 to 4, and then finally uh, reject the remaining heat out from 4 to 1. Okay. Now, notice, uh, we talked about this in the Carnot cycle, notice the signs of these integrals here. So this is an expansion so this is work out. We talked about that in Chapter 4. If the system expands, that means that the system is doing work to the surroundings. That's work out. And if I'm compressing the system from 1 to 2 down here on the bottom, that's, that's work in, or the opposite of work out. If I compute the work out from here to here, I'll get a negative quantity. So basically, this minus this, so this, the area, let's just 
do this in ink here. So if I um, draw the whole thing and now let's not do black. Let's do I'll do highlight in here. And, right. So if I take the area under the curve from three to four. And that's what I do when I integrate, right? Find the area under the curve from 3 to 4. Okay? And then I remove then because this is negative work. It's not going to let me do that, is it? Yeah. So then if I remove this, if I subtract off this work underneath and from 1 to 2, so I'm just going to highlight this area in now. Again, the area bound by this cycle represents the work that this cycle can do. Okay, because it's, again, this minus that, that area is going to be the work that the cycle can do. Okay, now there's some terminology here. I don't know if you noticed, um, there is a TDC and a BDC on this diagram here. TDC is what we refer to top dead center. That is the smallest volume. Top dead center is the position where the piston forms the smallest volume in the cylinder. Right? So if we go back here, notice that we're saying the cylinder, we've, we've rotated, and, and, but we're used to seeing the cylinder the other direction. We've, we've spun the thing around so the cylinder moves up and down uh, within the cylinder instead of and the lid being moving up and down here. We're saying the base of the cylinder moves up and down. That's how it's normally built in most engines. Okay? So top dead center means that the cylinder is up here at the highest position, right here. So it's making the smallest volume, so that cylinder is up at the very top. Now it means something slightly different if you're dealing with multiple cylinders. Here we're just talking about one cylinder. Top dead center refers to where that cylinder is up at the very top, forms the smallest volume, within the cylinder. Bottoms at dead center is where the piston forms the largest volume in the cylinder. And you can see that here graphically. Top dead center is where you're up here at the very top. That's the smallest volume. Clearance volume, right? Clearance volume is what we call that. That's, um, no, no, I want Clearance volume is well, I should write right hands more often. <laughs> Clearance volume is the minimum volume. Okay, that's the smallest one. Displacement volume is the difference between, and so there's the minimum volume again, that's volume at top dead center. And the displacement volume is the difference between, um, I'm going to write it this way, we'll say minimum volume. Right over here. Max. So the displacement volume is the difference between the max volume and the min volume. Okay? That's the displacement volume. So no, it's not the volume at bottom dead center. It's not the largest volume. The displacement volume is the difference between the largest volume and the smallest volume. It's this, this volume there. If you go to, to purchase a car um, with a gasoline engine or any kind of internal combustion engine in it, they will normally specify the size of that engine in liters. Right? And if you um, if you used to, if you've ever purchased a car in, in like the 90s or earlier, they typically would size those engines in cubic inches. Um, so the but again today, if you went and bought a car, if you if you bought a just a car, a regular car, nothing fancy. It's probably going to have a four-cylinder engine in it, and it's probably going to have a displacement volume of maybe two liters. And then that's actually they're, they're actually smaller than that now. But let's say you, you buy a car and it's got it's a two-liter engine, four-cylinder, two-liter engine. That two liters is the displacement volume for all four cylinders combined. That means each one of those cylinders has half a liter, right? Each one of those cylinders has half a liter of displacement volume, uh, the difference between the smallest volume and the largest volume. And uh, so again, all four cylinders have half a liter of displacement volume. 
And so add all four of those up for the entire engine, that's two liters of displacement. So that's what that terminology refers to. Um, if you hear the term stroke, that refers to the distance between top dead center and bottom dead center. Let's draw it again on this. Okay. So this distance here is called the stroke. Wow, I should really write it right-handed like this more often because I know you guys can probably see that a little bit better. Um, that's the stroke. Okay, the stroke is the largest distance the piston can travel. It's the distance between top dead center and bottom dead center. The bore is the diameter of the piston. Okay? So the bore is this distance from here to here. That is the bore. Okay. <coughs> Uh, third term, so again, lots of terms here. Um, top dead center, bottom dead center, clearance volume, displacement volume. You should be writing these down. If you haven't been, back this up 30 seconds and, and write all those down. Right? These are all terms that you, you want to become familiar with. A very, very important term here is the compression ratio. Critical term. The compression ratio, R, when I write that, in fact, I'm going to write that on paper notes because it is that important. The compression ratio R. This text uses R. That's not uncommon. The compression ratio refers to the ratio between the maximum and minimum volume. Okay, As we said here, that's the volume between bottom dead center and top dead center. If we look at the auto cycle here, and if we look at this diagram, we say, all right, well, where does where does a max volume occur and where does a min volume occur? Well, max volumes occur out here at states four and one, and the min volumes occur back here at states two and three. So this is any of the max volumes. This is volume at four, and any of, divided by any of the min volumes. So that could be volume at three. Um, this could also be volume at 1 divided by volume at 2 or any combination thereof. So this could be V4 over V2 and it could also be V1 over V3. That is the compression ratio. Compression ratio again is the, uh, the ratio between the largest volume and the smallest volume. Okay, now um, I don't expect you guys to be experts here in engines. Some of you will have more experience with engines than I do, and that's okay. I'm not an engine guy. This is not my this is not my biggest area of specialty, but I I understand the basics, and that's really all we need here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is an actual spark ignition. Let's see. I've got yes, it works perfect. Right, you guys see this? I pulled a GIF image from Wikipedia there. I'm hoping that's coming in just fine on the video. Okay. I'm going to back this up so we can see that. So injection, compression, ignition expansion, exhaust. Bring it in, compress it, burn it, and kick it out. And you see that you bring in brand new air fuel, you make sure you compress it, burn it, and exhaust it. So at step three there you hit you see that spark right there and that causes the air fuel mixture to ignite and burn and as it burns it creates pressure and that drives that piston down. So now we can hook this this rotation up to something else like our wheels, our drivetrain, our transmission, a, a generator, whatever we want to hook that up to. Now again the auto cycle is not this. This is the actual engine. And that's not a bad place to stop. We'll come back there on the next video.